Thank you very much. I will thank you, the organizers, the organizers, for inviting us and for allowing this presentation. Well, I am Maria de Celarbor from the Spanish National Research Council, but this uh, paper is work of a joint team uh, and is included in the. Um, well, I will start with the aim. We, we are going to, uh, to show our idea about a specific type of tourist, tourism associated with cultural heritage and language learning. Uh, we are, uh, we are uh, starting a research project on the heritage of the and landscape of the peninsular world in Castilla y León from a multidisciplinary perspective. Our background is varied. We are historians, archaeologists, there are language specialists on German, English and Spanish, and and tourism and a specialist. Um, we propose in this presentation a means of learning Spanish based on the headlights of a historical route. This is the route of the blown bridges. And this route refers to the Wellington's retreat from Burgos, which is here, to Portugal. To Portugal during October 1812 while fighting with uh, Napoleon troops, which had invaded the Iberian Peninsula. During this peninsular war, we call in Spain the Independence War, because it's a big war. Uh, these the people, the British troops, went to Burgos. They win, uh, they win against the Napoleon's wars, but while staying in Burgos, they, get, uh, they were running off for artillery and ammunition. And they were forced to abandon Burgos. And of, on this abandonment, the French troops discovered them, and they have to go to, to Portugal. And this Lord Wellington, which was responsible of, of this withdrawal, ordering several bridges in the River Tormes and the River Duero and the River several rivers, and they, he ordered to blow these bridges. So the heavy autumn rainfalls, the diseases, the famine seriously affected the French troops, and this was decisive to the winning by the British troops of the the winning and the end of the war. So let's highlight why this route is so attractive. First of all, because it still remains quite unaltered, or at least uh, we can have from this route an image of how the events took place and can be pictured, contemplated the grounds of Castile. Second, because uh, uh, one, uh, uh, we think that this is attractive because it has to do with its strategy. Uh, the specific characteristics of this layout were beneficial to the Allied army in keeping them from being caught by the French uh, army. Uh, we believe that our approach can serve as a means to gain deeper sense of the Spanish culture and heritage, will encourage the learning of students interested in these issues, and satisfy cultural and uh, language needs of these uh, students, Spanish students. I have to say that the Valladolid University, in which the project is based, is very popular for uh, foreign students to study Spanish because it's supposed that the best Spanish ever is spoken in Valladolid. Sorry for the <laughs> American. <laughs> so, so there is a lot of uh, foreign students coming to uh, this university. Uh, we, we have the aim of promoting uh, a learning environment while vacationing, uh, helping students to fulfill their particular language needs, to make the materials relevant and motivating, considering the specific interest, that is history and heritage, and contributing to the sustainable valorization of cultural heritage. As I said, this is part of a bigger ongoing project that seeks to valorize the heritage of the rural of this rural area. This rural area is Castilla y León, this in the green in the map. Uh, this is, uh, is uh, this region 
is among the top industries in the region and uh, it holds in fact the first place in Spain in terms to visitors to these uh, rural areas. However, it is often a big crisis uh, and it needs to expand its tourist offer further. So it's a, there are a lot of national travelers and the tourist aim is to increase the tourism, uh, the international tourism. And I have to say, Spain has a growing tourism because of the sun and sea movement. So we have a lot of tourists in the Mediterranean coast, but these inland areas uh, are out of this movement. However, uh, this area has the greatest diversity of natural landscape in Europe, recognized by the UNESCO. Well, we also have a lot of lists of uh, monuments included. We have seven historical cities in this region, including the World Heritage uh, List, of course, the wonderful gastronomy, the location, and the modern infrastructure. It's a, very, it's a rural area, but with modern infrastructures. Um, well, in, with our approach and our proposal, we highlight the opportunity to meet interesting people for these students and learn and experience th things firsthand. It will be like some kind of sensorial tourism. Uh, we offer them to get in deeper, deeper in the, to the culture and history of the territory, and that implies just more than just interpreting gestures or acquiring local colonial, uh, colloquialism or just learning the language. Uh, you can do this by simply enrolling some type of, some type of language program. We think that is through a combination on, of learning the language and evoking these historical events that uh, the historical and linguistic mastery can be encouraged for these students. So our proposal consists in analyzing the potential role of this historical route as language learning and cultural acquisition tool while contributing to the use of the peninsular world in tangible and tangible heritage as an educational and touristic resource. Uh, our emphasis in our being, not looking at. So we understand that a travel experience of this characteristic should be approached by making visitors feel history that, rather than contemplating it. Just as reporter Simon Hepkinstall uh, report while visiting a battlefield during his tour on the vital sites of the Peninsular War in Spain, he wrote this, you can almost see the line of red coats advancing and fill the tooth of cavalry hoods. So our idea uh, is to develop meaningful, unit, uh, meaningful units of Spanish for heritage purpose and combining them with on-site on activities. We are developing at the same time, I am focusing of, on this trail, but we are developing also the sick uh, nanning of these sites and trying to make because as we have seen in this session, uh, archaeology needs really the uh, big effort to communicate. So it's not so evident if you go through the landscape, you cannot see the battlefield. So you need to make an extra effort to communicate the sites. We, by meaningful, meaningful units, we mean materials related with that period of the history. Uh, Covering language use, cultural knowledge, and intercultural competence. I, I will show some examples. And we are we, uh, when we talk about on-site activities, we mean having the students visit important milestones such as castles or the bridge or these battlefields. Given that the sites directly related with the world scenarios reveal us an interesting and motivating base for this approach. One of the difficulties here is that their thinking is very often far ahead of their ability to express themselves in Spanish. So in building language and historical proficiency, the emphasis should be in familiarizing students with particular historical thinking. We do this by scaffolding 
and cooperative activities. I am afraid that I will run out of time, so I will show you some examples, for instance, of oral activities. We, for the first stages of the learning process, we propose a series of introductory exercises aimed at providing them with sufficient knowledge of the Spanish language. So, for, insta for instance, in this activity, we students get help with historical content, but they also become familiar with appropriate historical language. For instance, after reading the primary source on the reasons for Wellington to decide to abandon the blockade of the Castle of Burgos, the students are ask this, and they, the teacher asks the students in pairs to answer these questions. Uh, at the first stage, the students are provided with a frame to help them, but later they feel more confident and we have other kind of exercises. We have also role plays of simulations uh, and uh, the students, for instance, one activity that they like very much is the aftermath of the ambush in the bridge of Tordesillas in which there were some spies uh, telling the French that the British were there, so there are two teams and they reconstruct this. Or another type of activity uh, that which also promotes cooperative learning consists on inviting each student or a given group to find information about an aspect. In this example is the city of Toro in different uh, historical moments, we provide them paintings, historical tests, describing, and uh, several, each student of the group should learn more about, uh, for instance, about the archaeology, about the landscape, about, and they make cooperative group, and improve comprehension, communication, and they will support them with this research on the, in the area. As an example of the vocabulary exercise, we provide students with this handout uh, with highly visual layout and invite them to practice vocabulary related to the uniforms, I don't know, to this thing. So, to finish, we try because I am quite stressed about the, the time. I was like reading at home, it was like, on, but now it's like. So, so well, the conclusion is that we are trying to find new ways of offering a mixed experience of heritage, theories, and learning as beneficial means of promoting historical sites while providing effective tools to better understand and communicate in a foreign language. Uh, thus, uh, we try to combine learning, experiences, and historic sites, and complementary attractions in an effective uh, strategy for various reasons. Participants will get a better understanding of that part of history, in this case, the Peninsular World. It will for sure increase, increase tolerance and appreciation of other cultures, and eras, including the local inhabitants, because they, they are really quite engaged. It may increase the length of the stay of anterior expenditures, because uh, we try these courses to be longer, and we contribute to the protection of this historical heritage and its management, because of course this program is, uh, is one beneficial point of is uh, that the culture um, authorities are in, are, in the case of Castilla y Leon, are in the same office of the tourist authorities. So it's the same director general that manage both sides. So it's, it's easier to get the communication. So, and we believe that through uh, this teaching proposal, by presenting the potential role of the route of the Blom Bridge, as a touristic experience and language learning and future acquisition tools, we will successfully, I am very positive, we, will, we think that through this aim we will reach these goals. And thank you very much for your attention. And hope to see you.